Welcome back to the Marketer of the Day podcast. We are here with Pankil Shaw. He is from Outranking.io. Pankil is an entrepreneur. He is a SaaS product and content marketing expert with over 10 years of experience leading product and growth for startups. He's the CEO of Outranking.io, which is an AI platform for writers, editors, and SEO professionals to create impactful web content. So Pankil, super glad to be talking to you. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for inviting me on the show. Uh, I'm I'm very very glad to have you. And so this whole uh, this this product you have, this SaaS, which is an artificial intelligence writing product. Can you tell us about it? Can you tell us what it does and why it's so important? Absolutely, right. So um, well, we we started out with an SEO platform, and we soon realized uh, how content marketing and content writing game was changing altogether. And uh, while building out the writing capabilities uh, into the platform, we recognize that there's some major problems with AI. Uh, and the problem with AI is that it's trained based on old data, right? Like things that already happened uh, maybe a year ago, two years ago. So it does not really know the nuanced concepts of what happened today. Uh, it does not know that uh, uh, a new variant of coronavirus exists today, right? Um, and that's one of the issues, right? Like if you create content for web, which needs to be factual, not fictional, uh, it needs to be optimized for search. Uh, there are many, many, many nuances that you need to put together to create a piece that will be engaging, that will result into some ROI, and that it will create some impact onto the audience that you're trying to attract, right? So uh, we build, we, we re rethought the entire a process of how someone would go about creating a content and build out a modular approach to creating content uh, that can be factual, can be assisted. Use, uh, well, it's a assisted technology, right? So we're not aiming to replace writers. <laughs> that would be, uh, yeah, that would that would just be totally wrong. But um, we're assisting writers in creating and coming up with um, impactful content uh, for web that can rank uh, using our platform. And so when, when you say uh, content, what comes to mind is uh, maybe like blog content or like landing page, like, you know, copywriting uh, uh, kind of things. So is that is that some of that all of the above? Like what sort of content specifically does your tool help create? Any sort of content that needs to be discovered by your audience from search. Um, so it could be webinar pages, webinar landing pages. It could be press releases sometimes also needs to be discovered. It could be product pages. It could be blog posts, major release blog posts, long form content. Um, anything that needs to have that SEO, um, well, whether it is little or a lot more, uh, but some sort of SEO element to it. Okay, well, great. And uh, so I know that uh, as soon as we're done with this interview, I'm going to be going to outranking.io to, to look at this because I'm definitely curious and people, I think, should be maybe dialing up that web page while we're talking to get an idea about this because uh, as far as like artificial intelligence goes, I've seen two things in, in the past year or two. I've seen, number one, there's almost like a, a joke aspect to it where they say, <laughs> well, look at, uh, look at the, this video or this like movie script that this AI generated and look at these people who are like acting out the script and it was completely generated by a bot. And it's almost like funny that like, it, it almost seems like it almost seems coherent and almost seems real. But then when you look into it, you're like, Oh, it seems like a lot of nonsense. So there's that there's like the joke side of it. And on the other side, I probably see a new AI platform once a month on Facebook ads. And they'll say like, look, we type in a keyword or we show a similar web page and it generates all the stuff. And like, it almost looks too good to be true, right? It, it almost looks magic. And, and you mentioned a few minutes ago there that you say like, it doesn't do all of it, it, it assists. So do you have anything to speak to what's already out there? Because as a, as a lay person, as someone who's like, I see the ads, I see the videos, I've never actually jumped into the tool. It seems too good to be true. And I, I wonder like, uh, like, is it is it a gimmick or is this the future? Or like, just what are your thoughts on some of the the things that we've all seen out there as far as AI and content writing? So the biggest thing that I've seen that uh, puts me off is uh, click a button and we'll write the blog post for you, ready to publish and you'll rank high in Google. This is what major tools claim to do. And I just cannot stop the laugh. Is it, as the technology opens up, Many people are trying to take advantage of it and create some sort of idea or startups, but uh, what's happening is more or less 
creating tons and tons of editor that just provides content like a joke, right? Like fictional content. It cannot stay on track. It's more editing that you have to do, more rewriting that you have to do. Yeah, it sounds cool, right? Like, hey, it's going to write an entire blog post. But when I start reading the paragraph, I cannot help but notice that, hey, 90% of this is total garbage. Sure, I can take 10% of it, but I'm going to have to spend equal amount of energy just deleting that post and writing it again. So it makes no sense at all, right? So um, when we set out to create our platform, it, we wanted to really differentiate for factual writing. Uh, we wanted to emphasize on research. So our platform does the research first, gathers those points, and then influences that uh, to write around it. So it influences the AI to write around it. So that's why it makes it factual. Um, and this is very proprietary, right? Like we build this engine uh, inside out uh, that it's really difficult to replicate, but GPT-3 is now available to everyone. You can log in and you can start, you know, spinning your own content or rewriting it at scale without even going to any of these tools, right? So, <laughs> right, like, but again, it's, it's a layer. Many people don't know what it does and what it can do. Uh, and from my perspective, there's many tools out there that do an excellent job at one thing. And that thing is brainstorming. Uh, they do some sort of a social media post or they do email, but they're all sort of brainstorming, right? You are going to go read through the entire thing and then modify it according to your need. And if you're not doing that, then don't be in this profession is what I suggest them. Um, but it can still not produce factual content. Uh, and that is one of the biggest challenges that we set out to solve was how do we get AI to use the concepts that already exist now and will exist in future without training the AI to give you factual information, uh, true information that can be more readable to the audience, more digestible to the audience than what's already out there, right? So that's, that's what our major focus was, research first. And that is something that uh, I can say that I haven't seen any tool that can do that, that can read through data and give you a guideline that can be influenced to write AI, uh, content with AI. And, and I mean, how do you accomplish that? Like you're mentioning here that that's, it's sort of a little bit of, of a secret and a thing that you figured out, but like, what can you tell us about, about more of just like how the, the things that, that you do that others don't, and this whole concept of predicting like the, the present and the future, not just the past. Like, how did you accomplish this? So what we do is um, we build a sort of a semantic search uh, algorithm that what, what it really does, like, let's say if you have a section that you're writing about how can an, uh, what are the benefits of writing with AI? Uh, what it will do is it will go research the first hundred pages of Google, find out what could be the closest to that, uh, and then extract elements from it that are pertaining to the benefits of AI and use that to build out your remaining parts of your content. I'm not saying it's going to be 100% right on, but what we aim to do is 85% or 80%, right? If we can achieve that, then that is gold because we can save you three or four times more time. And what we've done is we've managed to achieve this with press releases too, right? Like press releases is information that only you have. Nobody else has it. And you are going to have to write about something that did not happen yet is about to happen, right? How do you do that? you have to provide in feedback, right? And that's how you create content. So what we did was we build out structured workflows around it too. So you can go from step one to writing intro to building supporting details to writing about company information and end notes, all with automation, but with your guidance, right? So with your data input in it. So you can just paste in unstructured data and hey, we can go figure out, create structure out of it and help you build out paragraphs on automation. And, and that seems like maybe that's the missing piece that that uh, we're not seeing from the other sort of solutions out there, right? Like they, like you said, they all tout, well, you enter a keyword, you enter a topic, you enter a URL, and it creates this whole mess that you have to sift through. But you're saying that if you can guide it uh, piece by piece along the process, then maybe that's kind of the, the secret to this being a, a shortcut, a time saver, and not just trading one type of busy work for another. Absolutely. When, when you're reading 3000 words, uh, you tend to get lost. You tend to close the window, jump onto different topics and just never come back to it. But when you are approaching it with 
150, 150, 150 word by word, you're much more focused, much more streamlined, and you don't have to constantly rewrite or adjust your concepts in the entire content. Uh, These are some of the nuances that majority of these writers or GPT-3 is not going to understand because it's persona based, right? Like writers write in a specific way. They have style. Uh, they prefer content written in a certain way, uh, researched in a certain way. So you need to be flexible. You need to provide guides and paths to writers in order to create this content successfully at 10x speed. Uh, but that cannot happen with just one button, write for me and spit out a bunch of crap. And, and, and I mean, I think that we can all relate to, uh, kind of having a, a, a buddy in a sense uh, when and taking those small baby steps to get to a certain goal. Like if you if you need to write that press release or that short presentation or something, it helps to have someone there with you to say, well, what about this paragraph? What about this piece? And even in like a programming uh, sort of sense, there's the, the pair programming concept where there's been so many times in my life when I'm like, you know, I need to go and and add this this uh, this function, or I need to uh, do this adjustment on a web page, and I just can't bring myself to slow down the brain enough to actually do those <laughs> things and click the buttons. But if I'm on a, a Zoom call, a screen share, or have someone sitting next to me, just that factor of having a passenger with you, even just watching you do it, it kind of forces you to slow down and maybe think a little more outside yourself and say, well, I'm doing this with someone watching me. So I'll actually take it seriously instead of just me, you know, doing some whiz bang stuff at a computer. I can, I can relate to that in, in a, a programming sense, but also in like a, a writing sense of having someone just helping you out and do doing that piece by piece. So this sounds like a, an amazing tool. We've talked about some of the the differentiators, some of the features. Do you have any interesting stories or, or case studies of people who have, have used your tool? Because I'm sure it can be used in all kinds of situations, all kinds of niches. And that's always interesting to say like, oh, I hadn't thought of this person was using it for their business in, in that way. And that gets me excited. So do you have any fun stories like that to get us really Absolutely. charged up? Absolutely. I, I have many stories like that. I started with a story that we created for ourselves to show that a product really works. And um, a product is more sort of a content uh, ROI maximizer, right? So we have scoring algorithms for uh, on-page SEO that we really emphasize for this content that you produce. So it keeps you on track in creating something that will generate value. And how do we prove that, right? So uh, recently I did a case study on our own website, which many people don't want to do it because then everybody would know what keywords you're going after, what 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 uh, what site you have that is attracting a certain traffic. So people are wary about it, but we're working with SaaS companies that are more than willing to lay out certain foundations. But we started with our own website. And what we did was we took only three pages and showed them how rank with creating a hundred scored document on our product helped us rank in real time with our users watching it throughout the process. We said, I optimized this three pages. Now let's see how they rank and believe it or not, they rank for 12 featured snippets uh, in less than a week, right? Like that is a kind of true value that your content needs to generate. Uh, if you want to be a thought leader, you need to be doing, doing this creative ways of ranking in Google and not just using uh, same old as a method where uh, you're still looking at keyword density to rank for a keyword. It's, it's just does not work anymore. And uh, you need to have a much more streamlined and realistic approach in creating content that is useful. So I think we're very close to saying that it's a, uh, it does really, well, I'm not saying really close to saying, but it does really work. Uh, and we've proved that with many topics that our site rank for primarily people also ask, right? That's a Google feature that everybody is searching on how to rank for it. Our site ranks for a feature snippet on it. How? Like it's, it's basic optimization, right? Making it digestible by your users and uttering to search engine guidelines. That gives you a solid content. And I think we've done a fantastic job at putting the foundation of step-by-step -step optimizing your content to meet the goals uh, that it needs to really get. And, and, you know, you hear a lot of this when people talk about AI is that like the, the blend of the, the human and, and the machine, right? So, so get, to get into like almost like philosophical terms, but let's like they, there's the, um, there's that the kind of the old school way of trying to use the, the machine to rank in Google and saying like keyword density, let me say the same phrase in every single sentence. And, <laughs> and you think, well, could that really fool 
Google may, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, but but nowadays with all the advanced things they do, uh, that, that probably doesn't. And then it's hostile to a human being who's trying to read something and they keep seeing the same word, the same phrase. And you're like, all I can focus on is I just keep seeing that same word appear again and again. And then the other extreme of that would be, well, I, I will, I will just write from the heart. I'll just write what I think. But then, as you know, that doesn't work because we need to have uh, have things like um you know, making the language readable and, you know, putting like structured content and the, the rich text and the headlines and all the little nooks and crannies. So it makes a lot of sense instead of trying to go to one extreme or the other to use the AI as a helpful tool. So that way you can get the information out there. That way you can kind of tick the boxes and deliver what Google wants and what the uh, what the human visitors want and just kind of work together with the tool. So that way it becomes a thing that that helps you instead of something that, that you rely on. So this seems like a, an amazing tool. And do you think in our conversation here, Pankill, is there anything that we uh, left out that we should be talking about that you wish more people would know about your amazing AI platform here? Yes, absolutely. Right. So one thing very important is uh, maximizing existing content ROI. And that's something that's very, very, very overlooked. And almost all SaaS companies, all the product companies that I've seen that did create this valuable content, but uh, they publish it and then they move on to the next one, to the next one, to the next one. Uh, a few months go by, they start ranking in the 30th or 40th or you know fifth or sixth page, which is considered graveyard. Uh, for all the high, you know, for the, all the hard efforts that you put in creating this solid piece. So what I really suggest is um, optimize your existing content and our platform can really do an amazing job in helping you identify which topics you should be optimizing to get the maximum content ROI, traffic, leads, uh, uh, based on certain uh, dynamics that we've put together. Uh, but I think it's, it's something that enterprises, uh, SaaS company, the product companies um, really need to focus on. Uh, if they want to build up their awareness funnel, uh, awareness side of the funnel, uh, attract more users through search engine and make sure that every piece that's written gets tons and tons of traffic. I like that a lot. And and that's uh, that seems to be something that's come up in some of the conversations I've had recently with some of these search engine optimization type of experts is avoiding the leaky bucket it is that there's always the, the, the thought of, well, I need to make uh, three blog posts a week and let me create this new content. But then that's just, that's been happening in the, at least the conversations I've been having is this idea of, well, what about what you have already written? And it, it's sitting <laughs> there and maybe it's it's ranking. It might be declining in the ranking or it could be ranking better or at the very least, if it's ranking well, keep it there and, and don't get edged up by the competition. And that's always the thing you hear about of like, well, update it to the current year or look at what's in there that could be kind of streamlined. And a lot of people don't want to do it because it's it's old content. It's something in, in the past. I'm not really sure if I'll get a lot of bang for my buck. But if we have this tool to help us uh, kind of move us along and nudge us along, then it can be something that we get benefits from and it does not take a lot of time and it maybe can uh, help us just uh, get an in, inch closer to perfectionism and say, you know, there's that old content from three years ago. It needs updating. I've been putting it off, putting it off. But now that we use some of these tools, maybe we can actually uh, do these things that we we know that we have neglected all this time that we need to do to update our content. So this seems like an amazing platform. So where do we go to sign up and, uh, and what, what's kind of the pricing structure here? So uh, you can go to outranking.io to sign up. There's a free trial as well uh, that you can uh, play around with. Um, what's, uh, we currently running a grandfather deal that gets you into uh, creating a lot of documents. Uh, but what we have is uh, the newest version of our platform is uh, launching on the 18th of January, uh, where uh, there is really true automation, uh, of course, with guidance uh, from the users, from the AI and from the users, both perspective. But it is really does the hand holding to the next level so that you don't get lost uh, in the winds. You stay on track, create that solid piece and make sure it's really optimized for search engine and for your, for your readers. Sounds amazing. Optimization with guidance. 
outraking.io. Uh, go there right now. And that way you too can enjoy this, uh, this crazy uh, fad that we hope will stick around of AI assisted content. So that way you can rank in Google, that way you can uh, more quickly generate your content and you can find out about all that and more and see videos and screenshots and features and get all your questions answered and, and sign up there at outranking.io. That's O-U-T-R-A-N-K-I-N-G.io. Any final parting words of advice, Pankill? Uh just uh, don't, uh, <laughs> this is the one advice that I give all the marketers who are, creating, are trying to create content. Chuck the editors that give you keyword density and look somewhere else. Uh, that's not how you create content for 2021. If you want impactful content, try to create, try to create content that revolves around the user intent uh, rather than keyword. What a concept, right? Be helpful and, and think more big picture instead of just trying to cheat the system. And so, so great advice. And we will see everyone at outranking.io.